I was finally able to get my hands on a Starlink satellite, so in this video we're going to show you start to finish how to do the initial setup of Starlink and then we're going to do some speed testing to see what kind of results we can get. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and I have plans to do a number of videos on Starlink. So if you guys are interested in this kind of content, make sure you click that subscribe button down below and hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Additionally, if you want to see what I'm up to on a day to day basis, you can follow Crosstalk Solutions on Twitter at Crosstalk SOL. So let's hop right into Starlink. Now, First things first, when I got this box, it's actually a lot bigger than I expected it to be, uh, but we'll see how much of that is just packaging and how much is the actual satellite itself. In terms of pricing, now I signed up for the Starlink beta and the satellite itself was $499. They also charged me $50 shipping for a total of $549 US dollars. Now I'm located in the state of Oregon and I just recently received the beta signup invitation. It was just about a week ago and as soon as I got that beta signup invitation, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and the Starlink satellite showed up in about four or five business days. So they were really, really quick to get it out to me and I think right now it's mostly available in the sort of upper latitude regions of the United States and Canada but Starlink also just opened up $99 pre-orders so if you're interested in getting you know being one of the first people to get your hands on the Starlink satellites if you're not in a beta area make sure you sign up for that pre-order and then as soon as it's available in your area uh, you know they'll send you another email about it. Alright so all that being said let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. All right, opening this up for the first time here. Okay. So right off the bat, we can see some instructions. There's no words really here. It's just straight up pictures. It says uh, set everything up, connect it into the router, and then use your phone to connect to the Starlink Wi-Fi network. Now, I already have the app downloaded on my phone, so I'm ahead of the curve here. And let's go ahead and open this up. All right, beautiful. So we have the dish right here, obviously. We have a stand. Let's pull that out of here. And you'll notice that everything is actually already pre-wired for you. So they make this really, really idiot proof, uh, of course, until someone decides to build a better idiot. Now, here is their router firewall. Uh, this is also a Wi-Fi network. And you'll notice that there's an aux port here so that you can go out to other devices, such as a network switch. All right, let's get this thing out of the box and set up. Now they give you a ton of cable length here. I'm not sure exactly how long this is, but man, this is like, you know, if you wanted to put this on your roof and then route it down into your house, you're gonna have plenty of cable to be able to do so. It is also really, really thick cable. I believe the power draw on this thing is something like 90 watts, so it's not something that you can just plug into like standard PoE or anything like that. Put our little router to the side. Okay, oh, the dish is pretty hefty. I'd say it's about 15, 20 pounds. And yeah, it feels really nice. Nice and smooth, looks really nice. I love it. So just like that, it has these little click locks that, you know, you stick it in, they automatically just lock in where they're supposed to be. I mean, this couldn't be easier. Like I'm done with the setup basically. All right, let's get this box out of the way. Now in terms of mounting options, Starlink comes with this sort of fixed tripod base. However, there are a couple of options that you can buy at the Starlink website, including a pole mount attachment for $24. They also have a volcano mount attachment, for instance, if you want a flat base so that you can screw it into a roof. All right, looks like the next thing I need here is power. All right, here we go, plugging in for the first time. And we have two white lights on the power brick here. And there we go, it started to do its thing now. Now you wanna have this satellite positioned in a spot where you have at least 100 degrees of clear sky around you. So not right up next to a building, not in the middle of a bunch of trees or anything like that. Get it up and clear of any sort of obstacles that are uh, blocking its view of the sky. All right, so now that it's plugged in and powered up, we wanna open the Starlink application. 
And here we can see the start setup button. We're just gonna say start setup. It says plug everything in. Okay, we're gonna say next. Connect to Wi-Fi. So let's open our Wi-Fi settings. Starlink wants to join this network. We're gonna say join. So it says connected, please wait a moment, and it says Starlink would like to find and connect to devices on your local network. Do we want to allow that? We're going to say OK. All right, and now it says set up Wi-Fi. So for our Wi-Fi, we're going to go with the very imaginative name of Starlink, and then we're going to set up a Wi-Fi password. All right, hit set up, and it says set up Wi-Fi, configuring Wi-Fi, please wait. Connect with your new network name and password, Starlink, and then it shows my password. It may take a minute for the network to become available. Let's open our Wi-Fi settings, and it automatically pops up and says, Starlink wants to join the Wi-Fi network, Starlink. Boom, there we go, we are connected, and I mean, this setup just couldn't be any easier. This is absolutely amazing. Really, really well done on the part of uh, Star uh, SpaceX. Okay, so now I've gone back to the Starlink app, and it says, please wait while your Starlink reconnects to the satellites. I've heard that these things can get a little bit warm. I'm not feeling any warmth yet, but uh, supposedly this dish gets warm enough that it can melt snow if it happens to snow on the dish, which is actually really a really kind of nice bonus feature. Also, pardon if you guys hear a bunch of banging. Next door, they're putting in a new patio or something, so there's workers over there hammering the hell out of that patio, and uh, yeah. But if I waited one more day to set this up, it's supposed to be raining for the next like seven days straight. All right, I'm gonna pause this for now and then I will come back as soon as the Starlink is actually connected to the satellites. It's been sitting here for about two minutes so far, so we'll see how long it actually takes. All right, all in all, it took about six or seven minutes for the dish to hone in on its satellites. And as you can see, it has shifted position from like directly pointing straight up to now it's pointing generally like about north, northeast. On my phone, we can see it says online and that I have a good connection. So let's go ahead and open up our statistics here. And there we can see ping success is looking really good. We can see the latency is at 31 milliseconds right now. And very little download and upload because I have not done anything to this dish yet. All right, so then we see latency down here to Fortnite, 48 milliseconds, Google 50 milliseconds, CSGO 60 milliseconds. All right, let's go back here and it says online good connection. Let's run a speed test. Interesting, it goes to fast.com for the speed test. That's the uh, sort of Netflix speed test, which I usually don't put a lot of stock in this one, but we'll see what it comes up with here. And it says nine megabits. Keep in mind too, I am wireless from my phone to this device, which is then going through the satellite. Uh, let me actually bring up speedtest.net and see if we get a different result. All right, here's speedtest.net. We can see we are at SpaceX Starlink. Let's click go. And yeah, about the same. In this case, we're getting about nine megabits. Okay, so yeah, nine down, nine up, which is not spectacular. So let's see if we can improve those scores a little bit. I'm gonna take the dish and move it a little bit further back towards this fence over here uh, because the way that it's pointing right now, within that 100 degree field of view that it needs clear sky, uh, my house is actually kind of in the way here. So maybe I can get a little bit better speeds by shifting this thing a little bit closer to the fence. Yeah, that's gotta be easily, easily 50 feet worth of cable right there. All right, so I've moved the dish a little bit further back. It has reconnected. It is showing a good signal at this point. Let's try our speed test again. Okay, so back to speedtest.net. Let's click go. 35 millisecond ping. There we go, that's getting better. Oh, oh. Go, go, go. Yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. 78.3 megabits per second download. That is satellite internet, folks. And holy moly, almost 30, 28 to 30 megabits upload. Let's see what it ends up at. 23.4 megabits upload. 78 megabits down, 23 megabits up. That is astounding, right? So first of all, uh, two things that I'm really impressed with. Number one, I like those speed results, right? So imagine that you are living in a rural area where like the best you can get is maybe like three megabit DSL. 
this is a game changer. Or in areas where you can't get internet at all. Like let's say you like camping. Now these are sort of supposed to be geo-locked into a specific sort of general area. I'm not sure how far away from this location I can take the satellite uh, so that it will still work, but I do hope to do some testing on that. Uh, the other thing that I'm really impressed with is just how quick and easy that was to set up. I mean, that was absolutely amazing. I started setting this thing up at about two o'clock. It's now three o'clock. So in less than an hour, including all of the work that I'm doing to film this whole thing, I was able to get Starlink unboxed, set up, connected, and getting close to 80 megabits worth of download with a 35 millisecond ping. Wow, I am absolutely super, super impressed with that. Now, one thing that I'm not sure about is the monthly ongoing cost of the service. Now, I heard that it was around $50, then I heard it was also around $100, so I'm not exactly sure. I don't recall ever selecting a plan, so to speak, that I'm you know, getting unlimited internet or, or whatever with the Starlink service. So uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research on that and see sort of what the ongoing monthly costs are for this device. But I did wanna do one other test, and that test is to plug in my laptop directly so that I'm not going over Wi-Fi with an iPhone eight, what kind of speeds can I get when I plug my laptop in directly to the included router here? All right, I've got my laptop. Let's go ahead and plug this in. I'm going to pull the little cap on the aux port here and plug in my Cat7 cable. Whoa. And now let's get this going in my laptop. All right, so I am connected directly. I have airplane mode turned on, so there's no Wi-Fi coming off of this laptop. We're connected directly to the Starlink router, and we can see that I have a one gigabit connection, so that must be a gigabit NIC on the router itself. That's good to know. All right, so we're gonna do ping 1.1.1.1, and we're getting Looks like an average of 29 milliseconds to 1.1.1.1. Let's ping 4.2.2.2. Looks like an average of 70 milliseconds there. And let's ping Google's 8.8.8.8. .8 and an average of 20 milliseconds to 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, speedtest.net. We can see I'm connected to SpaceX Starlink. Let's click go. This time it gave me a 90 millisecond ping time. And there we go, 40 megabits by 14.4 megabits. All right, let's try that again. 88 millisecond ping time. And this time we've got 82.6 down. And what happened? It looks like it froze up on me here or something. All right, so we had a little stutter or something, but it ended up at 82.6 down, 16.8 up. Let me run it one more time because of that weird little stutter that we saw. 20 millisecond ping time now. Oh, holy moly, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas, look at that. All right, so there we go. So this time, 20 millisecond ping time, 76.8 download, 16.6 upload. So really not bad, and actually no different from when we were connected over wireless. So it doesn't seem like there's any real difference, you know, at these speeds, sub 100 megabit, doesn't seem like there's any real difference between connecting wireless versus actually plugging in. All right, so let's bring up the obligatory YouTube test. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this just feels, let me mute this. Boy, it just feels it just feels like you're at a regular broadband connection. I mean, I, I mean I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Let's see, let's put this up to 1080p. And yeah, it's it's smooth. I mean, I'm like really scrutinizing this for any sort of stuttering or latency, but it's it's totally fine. Where's our buffer? Yeah, our buffer is way up here already. Let's go to a spot that's unbuffered. And wow, look at that. And then look how quickly the buffer filled up as soon as I click that other spot. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's pretty amazing. All right, connecting from my iPad Air. Once again, let's run one more speed test here. 48 millisecond ping. All right, and we ended up with 87.9 down, 15.4 up. That is 
a pretty nice result. All right, there you have it, an initial look at the setup and testing of the Starlink satellite system. I plan on doing a ton of testing with this thing, you know, maybe trying out different routers with it, see how it works, VPNs, etc. So if you guys have stuff that you would like me to test with Starlink, put that down in the comments below. And make sure that you like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.